The top stories tonight and why news. President Rodrigo Duterte appoints Police Lieutenant General Camilo Casculan to be the new chief of the Philippine National Police effective tomorrow, September 2, 2020. The National Capital Region remains under general community quarantine from today until the end of September. Same goes with Bulacan, Batangas, Bacolod City, and Tacloban City, while Iligan City in Lanao del Norte is placed under modified enhanced community quarantine, which is stricter because of its low health utilization capacity. Religious gatherings in areas under GCQ may now push through with not only 10 people but a 10% seating capacity. In Metro Manila, cities have adjusted their curfew hours now from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. the next day, except in Muntinlupa and Navota cities. Civil Service Commission to hold a week-long online job fair in mid-September. The Senate Committee of the Whole recommends the filing of criminal charges against Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, resigned PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales, and other top PhilHealth officials. Three quarantined overseas Filipino workers in Thailand test positive for COVID-19. An Ecuadorian husband and wife recognized as oldest married couple. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, September 1, 2020. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide to the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, Iligan City is placed under modified enhanced community quarantine. Meanwhile, Metro Manila, Bulacan, Batangas and two cities are under general community quarantine starting today until September 30, 2020. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosal Cos, details why. Malacanang places Iligan City under Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ because of its low health utilization capacity. MECQ is the tightest community quarantine status in the Philippines. It begins today until the end of September or one whole month. Same goes with the new quarantine classifications all over the country. General community quarantine is retained in Metro Manila and Bulacan. The provinces of Batangas and the cities of Tacloban and Bacolod will also be under GCQ. The rest of the country will be under modified general community quarantine or more relaxed than GCQ. Malacanang reiterates whatever the quarantine restrictions being implemented, health protocols against coronavirus must be strictly observed. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte ensures government assistance for medical frontliners evicted from their lodging. He instructed National Task Force vs. COVID-19 Chief Implementer Carlito Galvez to provide billeting for frontliners expelled from the places they rent. Dahil nga nasa frontliner ka sa COVID, pinapaalis kayo because of the fear unfounded na mahawa ninyo ang may-ari ng mga bahay at yung mga kasamahan ninyo sa mga dormitoryo. If uh, this happens, uh, you can call directly the office of uh, Secretary Galvez and we will provide you with the necessary uh, billeting. And uh, Pati pagkain na. Uh, and we will uh, choose a place nearest to where you are working. The chief executive also warns landlords who force their COVID-19 frontliner tenants to leave their residences. 
President Duterte also reveals the budget which the government has allotted for the tertiary education subsidy of 33,000 students amounting to 30,000 one-time grant. That is through the Commission on Higher Education. The beneficiaries are the children of qualified overseas Filipino workers either displaced or repatriated due to the coronavirus pandemic. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. As the new community quarantine period begins today, the government eases restrictions on religious gatherings. Rosa Licoz is back to tell us why. From the previous limit of up to 10 people only, the national government now allows a 10% sitting capacity in religious gatherings in areas under general community quarantine, which include Metro Manila. However, strict adherence to health protocols must be ensured. This is according to Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Pinayagan na po ang 10% sitting capacity. Uulitin ko po sa NCR. Pinayagan na rin po ang religious gatherings up to 10%, hindi lamang hanggang 10 katao. The palace also reveals some points of agreement by the Metro Manila Council as the one-month period of GCQ is being implemented in the National Capital Region. Those points include shorter curfew hours, now from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. from what used to be 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following day. But this does not include Muntinlupa and Navota cities. The Muntinlupa city government implements a 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. curfew, while Navota's residents must observe the 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew. The wearing of face mask and face shield is now mandatory in marketplaces. That is aside from public transportation, indoor workplaces, and commercial establishments. Meanwhile, the operation of some industries in the national capital region will depend on the approval of the local government units, such as testing and review centers, gyms, fitness center, sports facilities, other personal aesthetic procedures, pet grooming services, and drive-in cinemas. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, in Mandaluyong City, restaurants are allowed to operate at 30% venue capacity. This is so provided that restaurants strictly adhere to minimum public health standards at all times. According to Executive Order No. 27 Series of 2020 that Mayor Carmelita Abalos issued today, restaurants in the city are allowed to operate beyond the 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, but only for delivery services. The order takes effect today. Meanwhile, the temporary ban on chicken imports from Brazil remains. Mirasol Abugadil tells us why. As the Department of Agriculture awaits the response of Brazil's Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply, the Philippines retains the import ban imposed on chicken coming from the South American country. In particular are the documents related to COVID-19 prevention and control procedures among Brazilian factory workers in chicken processing facilities. The Bureau of Animal Industry has imposed a temporary ban on Brazilian poultry products after Chinese authorities reported that it found traces of the COVID-19 in chicken products from the South American country, second worst hit by the coronavirus pandemic. In a recent letter to Brazil MAPA Chief Veterinary Officer Dr. Geraldo Marcos de Moraes, Bureau of Animal Industry Director Ronnie Domingo stated that the Philippines is committed to resolving the issue. He noted that the ban on Brazilian chicken products was issued as a precautionary measure to ensure the safety and health of Filipino consumers. Brazil supplies 20% of the country's poultry meat imports. Other sources are the U.S. and Europe. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, DILG Secretary Eduardo Aña confirms to UNTV that Police Lieutenant General Camilo Cascolan replaces Police General Archie Gamboa as the Philippine National Chief. Cascolan becomes the country's 24th PNP Chief and will retire on November 10 upon reaching the mandatory retirement age of 56. But it's the President's prerogative to extend his term. Cascolan's assumption was based 
placed on the rule of succession as the most senior official of the PNP. Before being named as the PNP's second highest official, Cascolan was named Director for Operations and later held the position as Regional Director of the National Capital Region Police Office in April 2018. Gamboa and Cascolan are both members of the Philippine Military Academy Sinagdala Class of 1986. Malacanang also confirms that President Rodrigo Duterte has appointed Police Lieutenant General Camino Cascolan as the new PNP chief. This is effective tomorrow, September 2, as PNP Chief Archie Gamboa retires from the service. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque in a statement said, the administration is confident that the new PNP chief will continue the significant strides made by his predecessors in making the PNP a professional organization. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Archie Gamboa is packed and ready to go, he says. But strictly, there will be no celebration other than official ceremonies as he leaves his post. Our police correspondent, Leia Ilagan, tells us why. I'm packed. I'm ready to go. PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa is ready to retire from the service tomorrow. As he reaches the mandatory age of retirement in the Philippine National Police, 56. But General Gamboa has made it clear there will be no birthday celebration tomorrow, nor will there be a manyanita, which is traditionally given to senior PNP officers who is celebrating their birthday. Well, uh, sorry, wala tayong celebration, ano? Because, uh, walang manyanita. Uh, I already issued a directive na walang mag-attempt pag manyanita. General Gamboa thanks everyone who supported his leadership in the PNP for almost a year despite some challenges such the COVID-19 pandemic. So really, uh, I, was, I would thank God that I was able to pull through with these all kinds of challenges that I have encountered during my incumbency. And thank God for that. And thank you very much for the support, especially you from the media. No, you've been very kind to me. You've been very objective. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Cheryl Gamboa also confirms that he has sent his recommendation for the next chief PNP to Interior Secretary Eduardo Año. He also answered the media's query if the president has offered him another government post. The president is facing a lot of problems. Uh, napakaraming problema, COVID, uh, other agencies. So, ako naman, uh, I will just wait for orders. No? Kasi mahirap rin na uh, i-push ito because alam natin, uh, tapos si SILG uh, na tamaan pa. So, ang dami talagang restriction. Before taking office, Gamboa served as the PNP's officer in charge for several months until President Duterte appointed him to lead a more than 200,000 strong PNP force. It was after his mista. Former PNP Chief General Oscar Albayalde availed early retirement due to controversies involving illegal drugs. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that 3,483 new cases were reported today based on tests done by 93 out of 110 laboratories. The National Capital Region, or NCR, reported the most number of additional cases with more than 1,800, followed by Laguna with over 200 new cases. Cavite, Rizal, and Batangas all contributed more than 100 additional COVID-19 cases. That raises the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to more than 224,000. We have lost 39 more patients, but through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 464 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. But that brings the total recoveries nationwide to 158,012. Thanks be to God.
Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of almost 25.5 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions and sovereignty. That's after more than 264,000 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours. The fast-spreading disease has claimed nearly 851,000 lives as more than 5,000 patients reportedly died from COVID-19 from yesterday, while over 16.8 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. For job seekers, here's some good news for you. The Civil Service Commission will hold a week-long job fair this month, but this will be done online. Joanna Anano tells us why. A new social weather station's RSWS survey reveals that the number of Filipinos who have lost their jobs in the Philippines has spiked to around 27.3 million. In the middle of the pandemic, a lot of businesses were forced to shut down as even the global economy suffers, resulting in many jobs gone. And to help displaced workers, the Civil Service Commission will conduct a week-long online job fair from September 14 to 18. According to CSC Commissioner Attorney Eileen Lizada, 76 government agencies will participate in this online jobs fair. More than 700 government positions will be open for application. The CSC has partnered with Southeast Asia's largest online employment company, Job Street, for this job fair. Uh, this is the time po, at least uh, sa mga bahay ninyo, in the confines of your home, you can uh, access jobstreet.com. Dignan nyo lang ho doon sa jobstreet.com. Meron hong proseso on how to get it. Hopefully, we will be able to give more jobs sa mga taong naghahanap po. For those who wish to apply, just visit the Civil Service Commission's official website. Just download the Personal Data Sheet or PDS and fill in the necessary details. Make sure that the applicant has an account with Job Street. If you don't have an account yet, create one. Search for the government agency and position that you wish to apply for and upload your PDS. The concerned government agency will conduct an assessment on the applications. If the applicant is qualified for the job, the agency will call or send an email to notify them. Interested applicants should pass the civil service examination. The CSC urges Filipinos to take advantage of this online job fair which offers security of tenure and proper compensation from the government. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The DOH and experts advise parents to monitor their children's use of electronic gadgets when learning online. Dante Amento tells us why. Department of Education Memorandum Circular 2020-00162 contains various strategies in implementing distance learning delivery modalities for school year 2020-2021. These include online learning in which both the teachers and the learners use digital devices such as laptops, tablets, or smartphone plus internet connectivity. DepEd said schools may adopt a combination of synchronous and asynchronous online learning sessions, but they are advised to consider the screen time guidelines as recommended by experts including the World Health Organization for kindergarten. A maximum of one hour daily, one and a half hours for grades 1 to 5, two hours for grades 6 to 8, and a maximum of four hours for grades 9 to 12 per day, which will divided into two hours in the morning and another two hours in the afternoon. Ang sinasabi natin, bawat grade, uh, yung age group kasi parang kinder to grade 3, uh, limitado rin lang ang inaalaw na screen time kasi nga uh, gusto natin irespeto yung mga scientific opinion ng mga nakakaalam. Meanwhile, DOH Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere said, students should have physical activities or exercises during online classes. Hindi uh, sapat no? or uh, hindi sukat na dapat ay uh, 8 hours street learning. There should also be uh, physical activity. Hindi pwedeng uh, nakaupo sila sa harap ng computer for 8 hours. And kailangan ba yung mga activities na binibigay, no? katulad ng mga storytelling. Too much time in using gadgets or being in front of computer screens pose several health hazards. 
Experts say children are at high risk of eye of computer vision syndrome or strain, body strain, disrupted sleeping patterns, and hampered cognitive development. DepEd advises parents or guardians to monitor their children when using their electronic gadgets. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of Budget and Management clarifies the salary grade classifications of nurses, saying there is no demotion happening. Aiko Miguel explains why. A Department of Budget and Management circular states that Nurse 1 or new nurses in public hospitals will receive salary grade 15, that is more than 32,000 pesos. It's an increase from salary grade 11 of more than just 20,000 pesos. Those belonging to nurse 2 positions will receive salary grade 17 from salary grade 15. But according to the groups of nurses, it seems that some positions have been demoted because their salaries seem to be like that, which will be received by nurse 1 and 2. Ang DBM ay in-underestimates ang nursing community and its field of training and participation in the healthcare system. The compression of... of uh, the nursing plantilla has not only something to do with the salary, it has something to do with the job description in line with the work and training of a nurse, licensed nurse, where pay distinction must be necessary or must necessarily exist in keeping with work distinction. According to the Filipino Nurses United, more than 40,000 nurses will be affected by this seeming demotion. Hindi naman po sinabi ng Supreme Court na ibaba ang posisyon ng ibang mga nurse, nurses from nurse 2 to nurse 7. Kaya hindi po pwede na, eh kasi magpapangabot ang nurse 1 at ang nurse 2. Pareho na silang SG-15, di ba? So, uh, ginawa ninyo, dinimote ninyo. But according to Assistant Secretary Kim Robert Delgon of the Department of Budget and Management, this is not a demotion because they have a basis in implementing it. The official adds they will also coordinate with the Department of Health on the matter. The DBM also said the budget circular is in accordance with the provision of Republic Act 9173 or Philippine Nursing Act of 2002, which provides for an increase in the salary grade levels of nurse positions in the Philippines. Sa buong burokrasya po ng ating pamahalaan, lahat po ng profesyon, lahat po ng posisyon na meron po tayo or lahat ng uh, available plantilla positions natin, yun pong ating division chief position ay uh, nakatalaga po ang salary grade 24. Wala pong demotion na naganap since uh, we, you maintain the same salary grade but we, we acknowledge and we note yun pong inyong mga sentiments especially on the job description. The DBM also assures this will not be the last dialogue with the Nurses' Union to shed light on their concerns. ASIC Dalyon also said they recognize the sacrifices of nurses, especially in this time of pandemic, so medical frontliners should be given just and appropriate salaries. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Senate Committee of the Whole recommends the filing of criminal charges against Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, resigned PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales, and other top officials of the agency. This was announced by Senate President Vicente Soto III as he sponsored the committee report at today's session, plenary session, which showed the findings from the committee's investigation on the alleged a corruption hounding PhilHealth. The panel wants Duque, Morales, Executive Vice President and COO Arnel de Jesus, PhilHealth Senior Vice President Renato Limshaco, and Israel Francis Pargas face charges of malversation of public funds, illegal use of public funds, and violation of Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act for the alleged improper and illegal implementation of the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism or 
IRM. They were also found violating the National Internal Revenue Code for failure to withhold tax liabilities in the release of the IRM funds and charging it from the corporate operating budget of PhilHealth. The committee also wants to file charges against resigned PhilHealth Senior Vice President for Legal Sector, Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario, for negligence or failure to act upon the pending cases in the agency. Charges may also be filed against Full Health Senior Vice President for Information Management Sector, Jovita Aragona, and Acting Senior Manager for IT Department, Calixto Gabuya, over the supposed overpriced IT equipment and the alleged concealment of documents. Aside from the criminal charges, the Senate panel also recommends to the Justice Department and the Ombudsman the filing of administrative charges against Morales and Full Health Senior Vice President, Dennis mass for neglect of duty and insubordination. The committee hopes for the immediate filing of cases to ensure that the government funds are not mismanaged and corruption is not tolerated. Meanwhile, the committee also recommends to PhilHealth to implement a regular reassignment of its regional vice presidents to a different region every three years and for its high-ranking officials to file courtesy resignations to be able to give President Duterte the free hand to appoint new officials. We must thus exert our utmost authority and vigilance to read, read till health of undesirables and punish to the fullest extent of the law criminals. Less than this we cannot allow. Our suffering people deserve nothing less. President Rodrigo Duterte has appointed former National Bureau of Investigation Director Dante Geran as the new head of the embattled Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. In a television interview, Geran admitted he is a bit afraid as he does not know the operation inside PhilHealth, adding that he has no experience when it comes to public health. But he noted that he has knowledge in financial management and insurance, being a certified public accountant or CPA and a lawyer. Section 14 of the Universal Healthcare Law states that the president and CEO of PhilHealth must have at least least seven years of experience in the field of public health, management, finance, and health economics, or combination of these expertise. According to Geran, the first thing that he will do is form his own management. He will also give priority in reorganizing the officials of the agency in compliance with the directive of President Duterte and to study the financial condition of PhilHealth. All I have to do is uh to restore the trust and confidence of our people to build health. Uh, restoring the trust and confidence of our people to, to build health is equivalent to restoring the trust and confidence to, to the governance. Some senators wish the new PhilHealth chief all the luck and hope that he will be able to resolve the issues hounding the agency. For Senate President Vicente Soto III, Geran is a very good choice as the PhilHealth chief because of his clean record and investigative skills. Senate Majority Leader Miguel Zubiri also believes that the new PhilHealth president will be able to untangle the alleged syndicate or mafia inside the agency and stop the corrupt practices that will further stop the leakages from the state health insurance agency. However, Senator Kiko Pangilinan takes note of Geran's lack of experience in the field of public health, which, according to the senator, the palace chose to ignore. Despite this, he still hopes Geran will succeed in fighting the anomalies inside the agency. The Commission on Audit or COA flags the Office of the Solicitor General over the more than 1 million peso undocumented travel expenses in 2019. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. The 2019 Annual Audit Report of the Commission on Audit or COA for the Office of the Solicitor General states that the 1.16 million peso local and foreign travel expenses of the OSG lack supporting documents. According to COA, 
The unliquidated travel expenses are a clear violation of COA Circular No. 2012-001 and Presidential Decree No. 1445. The COA Circular states that all expenses for local travel must be justified and supported by a Certificate of Appearance or Attendance and a Certificate of the Head of the Agency. For travels abroad, the circular states that one must submit the Certificate of Appearance or Attendance for training or seminar participation and a narrative report of the trip undertaken or report on participation. According to COA, 17 officials and employees of the OSG failed to submit several documents for their local and foreign travels. These individuals requested cash advance in 2019 amounting to more than 1.16 million pesos. Some of the documents that were not submitted were the certification from the head of the agency for the hotel accommodation of the employees, certificate of participation or attendance, and training report. According to COA, the OSG has agreed to submit all missing documents as soon as possible. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The House Committee on Transportation held a hearing with the LRT, the MRT, and the Philippine National Railways. One of our senior correspondents, Ray Pelayo, will join us tonight to tell us why, live. Yes, Ray? Arlene trains in Metro Manila presently operate uh, below 50% of their capacities, which is way... Uh, less than their ridership before the spread of COVID-19. During the hearing of the House Committee on Transportation, various train lines reported their present op operational capacity. From 470,000 passengers before, LRT Line 1 accommodate only up to 70,000 a day. What used to be a 220,000 ridership on LRT 2, now it's only 36,000. Philippine National Railways, or PNR, serves only 11,000 passengers these days, compared with 60,000 before. And MRT2 from 280,000 to only 55,000 now. These are all due to the uh, implementation of the one meter physical distancing protocol inside trains. The PNR presented it is uh, able to increase its capacity while additional measures are being implemented, including the mandatory wearing of face shield and face mask. The PNP or PNR approves that uh, upon the simulation, passengers are uh, more than 99% protected if these measures are observed. This is what the attorney says Lauta, the PNR assistant general manager, said during today's House Committee here. And also, we were able to increase that by uh, restricting the use of cell phone uh, during trips and uh, restricting conversation on the on the on the trains. So that that was equated to ninety nine point six percent protection to our passengers. So we implemented 0.5 meter distance between passenger for the standing. So Meanwhile, according to Joint Task Force COVID Shield Commander Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Elizar. Motorcycle uh, taxi must be allowed to operate after private motorcycles were given as go signal for pillion riding. Although uh, the driver and the back rider do not li live in the uh, same room, provided they use a barrier and their own helmets. Kung matutulungan natin, itong ibang mga natin na walang motorcyclo, but may available naman na motorcycle taxi as long as uh, meron pong barrier. Arlene? So, Ray, after this um, House hearing, what will the committee recommend to the IATF against COVID-19? Well, Arlene, according to uh, Chairperson uh, Sarmiento, he will going to write a letter for the uh, IATF to recommend the uh, best practices of uh, PNR. At the same time, uh, we will also include the uh, recommendation of the uh, General Eliasar as to the uh, uh, motorcycle taxi. Arling. Thank you so much, Ray Pelayo, for that report. Now, here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. 
Typhoon Julian has exited the Philippine area of responsibility last night. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says as of 3 p.m. today, the typhoon was located at 915 kilometers northeast of extreme northern Luzon with maximum sustained winds of 175 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, the southwest monsoon or the Hanging Habagat is affecting central and northern Luzon, Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to the southwest monsoon or localized thunderstorms. Still, possible flash floods or landslides may occur during severe thunderstorms. No tropical cyclone advisory is issued. Why News returns. Bureau of Fire Protection Chief Jose Mbang Jr. has withdrawn the new assignment of Fire Chief Inspector Elaine Evangelista as Chief of the Binyan Fire Station. The BFP has also issued a show cause order against the all BFP personnel involved in an alleged mass gathering in Batanga City in violation of IATF guidelines. The BFP Internal Affairs Service and Regional Office 4A was will conduct a thorough investigation and its findings immediately to the Department of the Interior and Local Government. According to DILG USEC Jonathan Malaya, the BFP chief has also ordered the BFP Regional Director 4A to relieve all personnel involved in the incident from their current assignments pending investigation so that they could not interfere with the conduct of the probe. He adds the Interior Department will not tolerate any violence violation of the IATF guidelines among its uniformed personnel. Penalties await to erring individuals if proven of such violations. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR extends the business registration of those into digital transactions until September 30, 2020. Originally, the deadline was scheduled for today. The BRR says there has been a surge of registrants in various revenue district offices that are trying to beat the deadline. Considering this and the Bureau's resource constraints at this time of quarantine protocols due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the deadline has been extended. The BIR adds all those into digital or online transactions are advised to register their business activity on or before September 30 and no penalty shall be imposed for late registration. Just a service advisory from Manila Water. There will be a pipe relocation and retrofitting at the Lambingan Bridge beginning Thursday, September 3, 2020 at 9 o'clock p.m. until 6 a.m. Friday, September 4, 2020. This will cause water service interruption in several barangays in Manila, Makati, Mandaluyong, and San Juan cities. For a complete list of affected barangays, just visit at Manila Water's social media accounts. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. The government of Thailand reports five new cases of the novel coronavirus, three of them from the Philippines who arrived via a chartered flight to Thailand along with 158 Filipino workers last August 25th. All three Filipinos have been in an alternative state quarantine. They are the first Filipinos reported to have contracted COVID-19 in Thailand. Authorities say they are asymptomatic and tested positive for the virus three days after their arrival here. They are all language teachers and part of the second batch of Filipino workers who flew back to Thailand after being stranded in the Philippines. Two others are French nationals who came in the country last August 29th. Both are also in state quarantine and tested positive on the same day. Thailand now has a total of 3,417 COVID-19 cases with 3,274 recoveries, leaving 85 patients in hospitals. The death toll has remained at 58 since June 2nd. 
Meanwhile, border security here in Thailand has been tightened due to a number of Myanmar nationals caught illegally crossing natural borders. Those include the Moi River, which separates Thailand and Myanmar. The long border makes it ideal for people from Myanmar to illegally enter Thailand in search for jobs. Meanwhile, Ban Kuiyai School in Kanchanaburi, a school near the border with Myanmar, closes down as three students got in close contact with three men who illegally crossed the border. The three Myanmar men slipped across a natural border on August 23rd and stayed at the house where the three students lived. Two of them went to a hospital and were found to have high fever, suspected to have COVID-19. They were detained for illegal entry and ordered to get tested for coronavirus infection. COVID-19 cases have been surging in Myanmar for the past few days, drawing concern over illegal migrants crossing the border. Mass coronavirus testing in Hong Kong has begun under a new scheme backed by the Chinese government. The voluntary mass testing is being conducted with the help of medical staff from mainland China. Since registration began on Saturday, more than 500,000 people have signed up to take the free tests out of a population of 7.5 million. But a health workers union has criticized the effort, saying focused tests would be a much better way forward. Authorities have dismissed the criticism as a smear campaign. Hong Kong has so far managed to keep the virus at a comparatively low level with just under 5,000 confirmed infections. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases in countries worst hit by the pandemic. The USA now has more than 6 million cases of coronavirus infection, but with more than 2.1 million recoveries. India has reported nearly 2 million COVID-19 cases in August, the highest monthly tally in the world since the pandemic began. August was also the worst month for fatalities with 28,000 virus deaths. With 3.6 million confirmed cases, India has the third highest caseload in the world after the U.S. and Brazil. The government continues to lift restrictions to try to boost an economy that lost millions of jobs because of a strict lockdown which began in March. Meanwhile, Colombia has also surpassed 600,000 mark. Meanwhile, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam today said the decision to postpone the 2020 Legislative Council election was made during a critical period when more than 100 confirmed COVID-19 cases were recorded daily. Lam made the remarks when she was asked about the election during a media session this morning. Chief Executive Lam pointed out that the decision to postpone the election was a very difficult one. She said, it is not just only on the voting day when we may have over three to four million voters coming out to vote on a single day, but there are also a lot of electioneering activities and preparatory work to do before the election. The decision was taken to postpone it by one year. And those are the reasons behind the news here in Thailand and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you. Kath Numaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. An Ecuadorian couple is now officially amazing. Nina Armilio tells us why. Julio Cesar Mora Tapia and Waldramina Malclovia Quinteros Reyes have been married for 79 years. Julio is 110 years old, while Waldramina is 104 years old. However, with the love and respect they have for each other, the Guinness World Records recognizes the two oldies but goodies as the oldest married couple, with an aggregate of 214 years and 358 days. Julio and Waldramina say that challenges have just made their marriage stronger over time. According to Guinness, Julio Cesar was born on March 10, 1910, and Waldramina was born on October 16, 1915. Julio Cesar was born before the RMS Titanic sunk in 1912. The pair were born even before the television was invented. They decided to get married on February 7, 1941. It was an intimate and secret celebration because the relatives of the bride and the groom did not agree with the marriage. 
Julio Cesar and Waldramina, both originally from Ecuador, dedicated their lives to teaching and today they are enjoying their retirement. The couple shared the secret formula in their relationship is love, maturity, and mutual respect. Nino Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 1, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.